Short video here about pointer to a struct, pointers to structs. And there's a special arrow syntax that we're gonna learn about. So first of all, let's remember, why do we wanna have pointers to things, generally speaking? Um, so we see these a lot in function calls and think about what we already know about pointers and when we use pointer types. So one is when we want the function um, needs to change a an argument right then you have to pass a pointer to that function because if you pass the regular value then the function gets a copy of that value and changing the copy won't change the original one so that's one reason um, another reason is kind of related like or needs to return multiple arguments this is actually somewhat less common with structs because structs are already able to combine together kind of multiple, uh, I should say multiple values. Um, so that's something that actually we could use structs also to take care of that problem. But that's another reason why we saw pointers before. Um, why else would we want to have pointers? Um, is, well, they're, they have to do with array types. So when we use calic, um, so this is especially heap-based arrays. That when we use calic, we get back a pointer. And what we store in our program is a pointer to the first thing in that array. And there's one other good reason why a function would need to have a pointer argument. And it's if we want to avoid copying. Avoid copying large things. Now, this is kind of a new one. We haven't talked about this before, and the reason is, so far, our things that we've been dealing with, um, like char, int, double, are small. Um, and so this kind of wasn't a big issue, like copying a single int or a single char is not really any more work than copying a pointer, so that's totally fine. But now we know that structs can be large, and... Uh, so that's one th good reason why we would sometimes want to avoid copying them. And so that's another reason why we end up having pointers to structs quite a lot. And so if we had uh, just a simple struct, type def struct point. Uh, so now this is a standard point struct with X and Y that are both doubles, of course. So now if I have something that's of type point, so if I have like point p, then I would say like p.x or p.y, right? That, that makes sense. What if I have a pointer to a point? So this would be a point star, uh, I'll call it pp, pointer to p. Um, and what would I need to do to get out that thing? Well, normally when we have a pointer, what we need to do is first dereference it. So you might think you can do like star, p dot, star pp.x. That seems like it would work, except now we have a little issue, which is with that there's two operators going on here. So this is the star operator, the dereference operator, versus the dot operator, the struct, like struct member operator. So there's actually two operations going on, and we don't know which one happens first. So we want the star to happen first, but in fact, what happens is that this the dot has higher precedence. If you look in your operator precedence table, you'll see that the dot has higher precedence. So what this is going to try to do is say pp.x first, and then dereference that. But that's the opposite of what we need. We need to dereference it first, and then go to dot x. And so in order to do this here, we have to use parentheses to override the default um, precedence like this. So we would have to say star pp dot x to override the default precedence. And so what that means is that when you have a pointer to a struct, what you end up doing is a lot of um, like parentheses with this dereferencing, because what do you want to do usually is dereference and then use dot operator to get to something in it. And because that's so annoying uh, to have to write those parentheses all the time, and because using pointers to structs is so common, since structs sometimes might be big, then there's a special syntax for that, which is the arrow syntax. Um, so pp arrow x in this case is going to do exactly the same thing as this, what we had above, 
It's just a much more convenient syntax. So the arrow syntax here, this does two things. It first dereference. So dereference means that we turn that pointer into an actual object and then uh, then uh, struct member lookup. So pp arrow x is going to say whatever thing pp points to, um, go into that struct and then extract the x part of it. And let's actually see how this will work in our previous example. Um, so here, where would I maybe want to avoid copying is in this found variable that I'm using. So let's just remember for a second, we have this program that has a bunch of rooms and each one of them has uh, these different properties to it. Then we ask the user to type in what room they want and then we go through the list looking for a room that has that room number and if so, we copy it into the found one. And remember that this makes a complete copy when we do this assignment statement. And maybe that's a little bit inefficient. For this very small struct, it's totally fine. But if we added a bunch of more information to the room, like a bunch of strings and a bunch of other stuff, then, excuse me, we might want to avoid doing that copying. That might get kind of slow. So how could we avoid it is we could make this be a pointer. So we could say room star found. So found is going to be a room star. There's a nice side benefit here is that we can initialize this to the null pointer. And now we don't have to use this um, got it extra variable anymore because we can just test if found. If not found, that means that if found is not null. Um, if it, yeah, this is testing if found is equal to null, then we'll print an error. So we kind of get to use the when we have the pointer because we can use that special null pointer value that means a pointer to nothing, and then we can just chest. Um, so this now test for a null pointer value and then we'll print out some error. So now what are we going to do here is we don't we can't do this assignment because rooms index i is going to have type room. So this has type room but found has type room star. So what do we want to do is is take the address of this. So address of rooms index i that will work. And now down here, when we use the found variable, now we don't want to say dot is lab or dot num or dot seats. We want to instead use the arrow operator. So we want to change these dots to arrows. And remember, that's just a shortcut for dereferencing it first and then using a dot. Okay, so now our program is using a pointer, so it's not copying the room information. Um, but when we run it, it should again be kind of indistinguishable that we've made any changes at all. Um, it should just work the same as before. And it indeed does work, uh, but it's a slightly more efficient program now because it's not making copies of this. So this is a small example of using a pointer to a struct.